they said that the Honda was just that little bit much too horsepower for me, he said. <laughs> but uh, whether or not um, he's going to find some horsepower, extra horsepower for the Suzuki for the second race remains to be seen. To give you an insight into just how warm it is here today, first race, the on-track temperature was 32 degrees Celsius. That's gone up by some six degrees, and the ambient temperature has uh, just nudged up a couple of degrees. Carl Fogarty, King Carl, the man that really is world superbike racing, along with his wife Michaela and his broken left arm, has uh, made a special visit here to Donington to see his fans, and they just went wild. Look at this. They all wanted uh, to touch the king, not too hard though. And uh, just Carl spending some time to say hello to this very, very big crowd. We're getting ready for race two. Let's hope it is every bit as good as race one. And for the British fans, uh, well, it was a superb ride in third place by the British wildcard rider, Neil Hodgson. Neil was delighted with his performance. Um, a little bit disappointed that he let uh, Edwards get away too much at the start of the race, but a great reception from the British crowd here, and they've come to see the Brits do well, they always do, they're very patriotic of course. They like Frances Pierre, Francesco Killy, and they like Haga, they like any trier basically, these British fans. Now as a result of Colin Edwards' 10th World Superbike career win, there he is, the main man so far. He now leads the World Superbike Championship by just two points over Noriyuki Haga. Now, Colin's just asking uh, the girls just to bring the umbrellas over. It is very, very warm, and uh, Colin just wants to be shaded. Jean-Jacques, the Michelin uh, technician there on the line, and um, pretty much the same as the first race for Colin Edwards and Aaron Slide, as far as their tyre choice goes. And Colin pumping plenty of water in. It is uh, extremely warm here, and I guess what you can say as we take a look at the grid, as was it, uh, as was the case for the first race, Edwards, Keely, Yanagawa, and Hodgson, Roger Burnett. The riders come here not expecting to face weather this warm. That's true, and certainly the British aren't used to it because we don't very often have race days like this in the UK. You need to take on quite a lot of fluid, of course, and and replace those um, those body salts and so on because the race time for the first race, 25 laps, was 39 minutes and 26 seconds. And of course, that does take quite a lot out of these riders. Well, we just had the on-screen graphic that the on-track temperature was 38 degrees. Now that was taken a little while ago for uh, our people to make the television graphics up and then put them to, 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 uh, to line and on air. We've just had a report from on the ground now. The track temperature has reached, reached 40 degrees Celsius. That's going to make tyre choice quite difficult. We haven't had 40 degrees of track temperature here all weekend. 36 is the maximum that we've had, and that was yesterday for qualifying. This, morning, early, this morning's earlier race, or this afternoon's earlier race, should I say, was 32 degrees, as Lee said. And 40 degrees is quite a considerable difference. Um, that may put the tyre choice into the next range, that is from medium to hard or soft to medium. I like to talk about there, Frankie Keeley has just got a, a cover over his tank. Well, that cover is a reflector which reflects the sunlight and the heat. It's got an e a cooling element and it keeps the fuel cool. And of course, the fuel being cool uh, doesn't expand then and it keeps less um, capacity in the tank and doesn't push the excess fuel out of the breather pipe. Akira Yanagawa is well on the way back to being at 100% fitness and back to the uh, Akira Yanagawa of old. We saw him uh, have a, a terrific win last year in the final race of the year at Sugo. And here at Donington last year, he finished just off the podium in fourth position. Now he is starting from the front row, but uh, still battling with that left collarbone. And uh, he said by his own admission, he's around about 93% ready and uh, back to his normal self in terms of fitness. So Kira Yanagawa in the first race finished seventh, was battling with James Hayden and Troy Corsa. And there is Neil Hodgson, just getting a, a last minute rub down. A lot of the riders, you see, they suffer forearm pump. And uh, Neil Hodgson, he's a very fit young guy, very focused. It was a tremendous ride in the first race. He wants to get away to a better start in the second and not give the two front runners, which was Akira, or rather, uh, Frankie Keeley and Colin Edwards, so much of a head start. The crowd are having a wonderful day here. There's so many people sunbaking and enjoying the warm conditions and uh, they really have turned out in tens of thousands and a terrific day at Donington. That arm pump that you talked about as we look at James Hayden, another British wildcard, 
with his very attractive girlfriend there to his right hand side uh, smiling away James will be pleased with his result um, he likes to gain experience he's very very confident um, he always believes in himself and I think that's um, a big strength of James's you can see again the, the, the cover over the petrol tank the silver foiled cover looking down at the front end of the bike and this Ducati this Red Bull Ducati using Brembo brakes it's always a wonderful sight before the start of the race so much color so much on the line and there is your front row so just at the back bike three that's Aprilia's Troy Corsa in the first race not as high as what we've seen him so far this year Troy was back in eighth position but it has been a very fast pace Noriyuki Haga on the works Yamaha talking to one of his uh, team members they said as soon as Haga hit the first turn he immediately thought oops I think I've made the wrong choice in setup so they've gone back and he hopes to <laughs> live up to that saying on the front of his helmet I'm gone he needs to finish on the podium in this one to stay in touch with Colin Edwards it's only a two-point margin but uh, he can't allow any more wildcard riders to steal world championship points away from him when it's so close the grid beginning to clear now and probably the most difficult time for the riders on the grid they've got to do the sighting lap and then sit while they're photographed and interviewed and the whole Celebration takes place at the, the start of this second race, the build-up to the start of this second race, but very tense moments indeed. Um, there isn't one of those riders out there that would swap place, I don't think, with the viewers um, if they felt that they could get a podium result by sitting at home. <laughs> very, very nerve-wracking time, but as soon as they go, once the grid is cleared, they go out and they're by themselves once the start is over. As soon as they drop the clutch, all of that exits their mind, that feeling in their body, and they're fully focused. Troy Corsa, traditionally known as the Super Pole Master, and probably more better known as the 1996 World Superbike Champion. His name synonymous with Ducati, but not anymore. It's now Aprilia, and he has done a mighty job so far in season 2000. 49 is Chris Walker, who put in a, uh, a very solid and strong ride to finish fifth in the opening race behind Noriyuki Haga and ahead of fellow British wildcard rider James Hayden. Luca Catalora only completed five laps in the first race and came in with tyre trouble. Said he didn't feel 100% uh, with them. Was back in 20th position by then and decided to call it a day for the first race anyway. We're getting ready for the uh, riders to go out on their warm-up lap leading up to the second race, the fourth round of the World Superbike Championship for 2000. This is Donington Park and Colin Edwards complete the first Honda double win here ever. So just building up to the start of the warm-up lap, you can see that the officials are waiting for the people in the right-hand corner, the right-hand side of the grid, to actually get back into pit lane. This process does take some time uh, because there are an incredible amount of people that want to be seen on the grid and have jobs to do out there on the grid and of course not least than the technicians for all of the teams but almost free now and the green flag's being waved at the left hand corner so we're going to start on their warm up lap the warm up lap is approached very differently by individual riders some like to hang about and uh, then go quicker towards the end of the lap some like to go quicker at the beginning of the lap and try and uh, get some heat into the tyres although they've all been sat on the grid with tyre warmers so tyres should be reasonably hot not too much of the cold getting heat today that's for sure down through the trainer curves out of Hollywood down this spectacular section of this 2.5 mile Grand Prix circuit at Donington Park full field Harajika Aoki there on the R&D Ducati one of Riders who retired from the first race. In fact, we have 10 riders not finished. Goreshi, Silvestro, Crawford, Pettuccini, Aoki, Yagi, Catalan, Ben Bostrom, he finished 15th. And we'll be looking to improve on that, especially when British wildcard rider Neil Hodgson retired the place he had his finisher. He had James Hayden and John Reynolds ahead of him. In fairness to Ben Bostrom, though, it's his first time here 
in uh, race conditions at Donington Park. He's going through that learning process each and every round. So on the improve on the 155 Ducati. And there's Aaron Slide, who had a great ride for his comeback ride in the first race, finishing in ninth position and said he didn't feel too tired after he finished, which was good. The ride is weaving from side to side, getting the sides of the tyres hot. They're just in a warm-up lap, which is some 10 seconds slower than it would have been had it been a race lap. So not using the edges of the tyre, keeping heat in the tyres. Now coming round, bikes into neutral, coming up to the, their place on the grid very, very gently indeed. Not looking to slurge the fuel about too much in the tank. Kiri Yanagawa coming forward onto the, to take his front row grid position. And there's the man with the red flag that will signify when we're ready to go. The question is, will we see a British rider score victory here at Donington Park? No other British rider other than Carl Fogarty has ever won a world superbike race here. Or will it be Colin Edwards to get the double? Or Frankie Keeley, his first win at Donington. Seconds away, we are just about ready to go. Race two, round four, Frankie Keeley on the Suzuki. What about that? Off the line like a rocket on the number seven. There's elbows there flying everywhere. A little biff, a little barge, and Hodgson has got away to a terrific start. The wild card is into second, Edwards is back in third, and Hager's trying to go around the outside, but it's Frankie Keeley as they swoop down through Hollywood towards the Craner Curves. Look at the Suzuki rider go. Then it's Hodgson, then it's Chris Walker, so two wild cards in the top three. Well, I haven't done this for a while myself, but my heart's beating fast watching them all come through Craner Curves. Chris Walker had a bit of a coming together with the Akira Yanagara off the, uh, the grid there, and Hodgson said he didn't want to let the leaders get away. He gave them a two-second lead after a couple of laps in, in the earlier race today. He didn't want to do that because he felt that he couldn't make that time back up. He's sticking to his word. Chris Walker's got a good start. Colin Edwards has got a good start there. But the man leading the race, this man number seven, Pierre Francesco Killy. You saw him in the post-race interview. He was disappointed. He said, I should have won, but the horsepower stake. I was let down there. Inside move by Edwards on Chris Walker. Couldn't quite do it. Hargis looking to pressure Edwards as well. When the Texan Tornado got off the VCR 1000 at the end of the first race, he was a little dizzy, a little dehydrated. He's not 100% healthy this weekend, so he's battling, and it's tough in this heat this weekend. Chris Walker was a little down on himself after race one. He said he rode not as well as he possibly could have. So watch for Walker on 49. Look at the Suzuki wiggle underneath him. The wild card going on. Harger on Edwards. This is uh, Kyle Army all over again. The battle for fourth. Meanwhile, Frankie Keeley has gone. Frankie Keeley, they're out in front, but Hodgson stalking him. And the nickname of Chris Walker, the stalker, number 49, stalking the pair of them. Now there, Colin Edwards, and I heard some scraping. Somebody has fallen off at Redgate. We haven't seen it, but I definitely heard some scraping there on the effect, so I'm, I'm sure we'll see someone down there. But Gilly in front on number 47. Neil Hodgson, third place in race one, 48. There's a Yanagawa on the green bike, always easy to spot the Kawasaki's. And there we've got it, Troy Corsa down at Redgate. Will he be able to uh, get back onto the circuit and continue? It wasn't a happy race in the first one. He finished eighth. For the former winner here at Donington, Troy Corsa on the Aprilia is perhaps out of this second race, but Frankie Keeley is dominant. Corsa winding his way through the kitty litter back out onto the circuit. And let's hope he can continue. He'll probably pop back into the pits and just check if there's any serious damage. Chris Walker looking to make a move on Neil Hodgson. Here we go, the inside. The stalker is through at Fogarty's. So Chris Walker. He knew that he could have ridden better in the first race. He's doing something about it in race two. Well, Edwards is the danger man now because Edwards is coming up on Hodgson. He's got the inside line, but Hodgson closes the door. Chris Walker now up to second place, and that's brilliant for Chris. Neil Hodgson will have to fight back, but there's two people behind Hodgson, and that's Colin Edwards and um, Noriyuki Hager. This is a little battle of its own, I think, a private battle, but Hodgson there getting up the inside of Walker. Now, Hodgson's very good at Goddard's corner, and my prediction is that he'll go through on Walker and make a pass at Redgate, this corner. Now, is he going to do it? Yes, he's done it, and Edwards is almost alongside Walker as well, so that's put Hodgson back up to second place. Noriyuki Hager is not out of this either, and a good solid start to Akira Yanagawa and Aaron Slight back there in ninth position behind Reynolds and Hayden, but Frankie Keeley has got a little over a second on this bunch. 
because whilst they're fighting, Frankie Keeley can escape and the wild cards are there ahead of world championship leader Hager almost drops the Yamaha and loses some space and track space to Colin Edwards. He wasn't happy with the setup of the bike in the first race after finishing fourth, made some drastic tyre and suspension changes. And he's right there with Edwards, but an anxious moment there. Bostrom ahead of Aoki. Then it was Mecklau and Catalora still in it at the moment. Anxious moments this for Colin Edwards on bike number two there because he's got two British wildcards in front of him and Killy's getting away. Edwards is definitely going to try and come up alongside Hodgson and he's done it. Um, this Honda is very manoeuvrable on this part of the track and it wouldn't surprise me to see Edwards take Walker at either the Melbourne Loop or Goddard's. Edwards is sizing him up for an outside run. That's the long way around to Melbourne. Look at Chris Walker, speedway style into the Melbourne hairpin and then out. There's Troy Corsa. The bike is on the ground and Corsa is not happy. He walks back to the pits. His second race is all over. And Hodgson now is trying to stay with Colin Edwards. Haga is the next one behind him, Akira Yanagawa. And Chris Walker is about to be in a big fight with Colin Edwards. Plenty of power, we know, on the VTR 1000. He slips up the inside of Chris Walker. So Edwards now into second. And Keeley is the next man on his list. But Frankie Keeley has a 1.6 second lead after just two laps. Look at this. Daylight between he and Colin Edwards, then Walker, Hodgson, Haga, and Akira Yanagawa, your top six. Well, Keeley did say in the post-race interview that he felt that um, he needed to make a break. Um, he certainly made that. Now it's all down to Colin Edwards to see if he can make up the time. But Edwards uh, has got Walker and Hodgson behind. Yanagawa and Hager, and looking further down the field there, there's Hislop and Aaron Slight having a nice battle as they stream through, and look at Gregorio Levia, well, well back. Bostrom an improved performance, he's up into 12th, fighting with fellow Ducati riders in Borja and Aoki, Mecklau is in there as well, and Luca Catalora in 15th, but we're focusing on this battle for second and third. Colin Edwards, can he clear out? Walker will have to keep an eye out for Neil Hodgson, there's the two Ducati teammates. John Reynolds suffered tyre problems. That's why he went back and Walker backs it in again. Very spectacular coming into the Melbourne hairpin. Look at Hager. He's starting to size up Neil Hodgson now. All the while, Frankie Keeley is enjoying some clear airspace out front. We'll watch the split. It was 1.6 seconds the previous lap. Has Colin Edwards been able to reduce that a little? Frankie Keeley would already be across the line by now. No, he hasn't. In fact, Keeley has pulled two tenths. It's now 1.8 seconds to the Suzuki rider, and Hodgson is through on Chris Walker, and Hauger is looking for a way through also. Hodgson's now got to get his composure and try and go after Colin Edwards if he wants to shake off Chris Walker, and Chris Walker's not an easy person to shake off, let me tell you that. Uh, in British Championship racing, he comes straight back. He knows that if he lets Hodgson have a couple of laps, that he will get a gap, so Walker, intelligent, and Hodgson dives underneath there. That was a phenomenal move. And it's put Hager in a position where he's got through on Walker as well. So, oh, look, look at, at that. Walker. Walker right through on the inside of Noriyuki Hager. How close do you like it? Hager came through on Walker, and then Walker returned the favour. Close stuff between the World Superbike regular and the wildcard rider. Keeley, Edwards, how about race two? Hodgson, then Walker, who was very disappointed about the way he rode in the first one. And look at him go in race two. Sticking it right back to Noriyuki Haga and Akira Yanagawa still lurking around, waiting for something to happen in sixth position. Well, these guys swapping places, absolutely breathtaking stuff. Meanwhile, Colin Edwards is working his way towards Pierre Francesco Killy. The gap on the last lap was 1.8 seconds, and we'll wait and see uh, if that gap has closed. But Hodgson looks like he's managed to shrug off Walker temporarily, and he's only got to hope that Haga, there on number 41, gives Walker a bit of a hard time and they start duffing each other up as they did then at McLean's and that was a sensational pass by Chris Walker back at McLean's corner and certainly not the stuffing out of Harger. Five down, 20 to go and that margin between first and second remains, first and second remains the same, 1.8 seconds. Suzuki's Pierre Francesco Keeley over Honda's Colin Edwards but this is where the action has been happening. That's for sure. Chris Walker, Noriyuki Haga, and Neil Hodgson. Now, Hodgson has been able to gap Walker just a little bit, and that would be because of the fight on the previous lap through this section between Haga and Walker. Sometimes sticking it up the inside 
It's just a game of bluff. There was no bluff there. That was serious stuff between Walker and Hager. There's James Hayden, 45, 47 is John Reynolds. Let's watch this. This is the replay. This is Neil Hodgson on Chris Walker. Fantastic move. Now watch 41. We'll stay with it. They head through Swans curve. Watch how close it is here between Hager and Walker. Well, then we didn't see the best bit, actually, because Walker came back up the inside of Harder as they both, all three, back the bikes into Fogarty's S's, and Walker looks like he's closed the gap, slight gap that Hodgson had on him, and there's Akira Yanagaro still battling on there, four seconds behind the leader on the last lap. Akira, we know that Akira is nursing a shoulder injury, 93% fit, he did say, so we don't expect Akira to be challenging any harder than he is. Chris Walker, he isn't done yet, he's not finished. Staying in there and not allowing Neil Hodgson to get away too far. The run back onto the main straight. Hodgson onto the caddy. The Suzuki of Walker, then the Yamaha of Haga. And the gap is now out to 2.1 seconds. Keeley over Edwards, so it's favouring the Suzuki rider at the moment. And Ben Bostrom is on the improve. His own personal best lap time in the race. He's now moved up to 11, the head of Aoki. And right behind Steve Hislop and Aaron Slide. Well, very similar lap times to the earlier race today, so the eight degree increase in track temperature not affecting things at the moment. But Killy certainly got a nice lead, 2.1 seconds over that man there, Colin Edwards. But Edwards is um, a character that can work hard, he's very consistent, he keeps the bike in shape, and that's the battle for third, fourth and fifth. There's the Yamaha team, the Italian-based works Yamaha squad of Noriyuki Haga, team manager, David Brivio. There's the battle, third, fourth and fifth. Watch this, Walker is surely going to line Neil Hodgson up into the S's. Walker is very good under brakes, not close enough this time though. Tags in behind and Harger is still looking dangerous also. This is within the top five, third, fourth and fifth. Down to the Melbourne hairpin, Frankie Keeley. We repeat what we said in the first race as they back it in, Walker and Harger. But Suzuki nor Frankie Keeley has ever won here at Donington Park as far as World Superbikes are concerned. Walker now sizing up the inside of Hodgson. This is a tremendous battle, Roger. Well, this is like the British Championship is every week. Um, these guys have battled each other. They know each other's race tactics. Um, in the British Championship races, uh, in my experience, the Suzuki tyre wear is more considerable than the Ducati of Hodgson's. And uh, Noriyuki Aga is sat there and He's probably thinking, what have I got to do to try and get past these guys? And maybe what have I got to do to try and stay with, with them? Because we know that Neil Hodgson can do it from the first race. Chris Walker was uh, fifth in the first race, so a very good performance from him as well. And Harger sitting there wishing that he was very much closer, I think, to Pierre Francesco killing the leader. Well, day two on something happened further back. We haven't seen it in vision as yet as Frankie Keeley looks comfortable with a 2.3 second lead over Colin Edwards. There is the Suzuki camp, that's Francis Batter on the left, the team owner and manager, and that's Frankie Keeley's wife in the middle. All smiles at the moment, but a long way to go. Lap seven of 25. Plenty of time left to go as Walker continues. Updating you on Ben Bostrom, who's moved up now into the top 10. So his confidence is building as Walker decides not to take that inside run into Fogarty's S's. Gets a far better run out of it though, than Neil Hodgson. This is the downhill section towards the Melbourne hairpin and watch Walker's bike. Normal, every lap he slides it in, not so exaggerated that time and Hager seems fairly content to sit where he is at the moment. Perhaps he can't do anything about the two in front. Well, they're not too far behind Colin Edwards and if Edwards has decided that he can't really catch Killy at this early stage in the race and he's going to wait and see what happens, then he could easily get woken up by the freight train of the uh, the six-wheeler behind him of Hodgson, Walker and Harger. Now, Harger has come a little bit closer to Chris Walker. Now, it would be in Neil Hodgson's interest if Harger on bike 41 could pass Chris Walker because that would cause a little bit of friction there and then they would hold each other up a little bit. Meanwhile, Neil Hodgson could go after this man, Colin Edwards, who seems to be doing everything pretty right today, you'd have to say. Work Honda team were very pleased, as you would imagine, after the first race. Colin wasn't quite so happy though. He said his lap times for himself, they were quite inconsistent. That wasn't characteristic of him. And perhaps that's because he wasn't feeling so good and did have a lap in concentration. I know he's been quite congested in his head so far this week. And there we go inside the Works Honda pit. Meanwhile, it's all happening. 
for the Suzuki organization. Two and a half seconds that last lap. And speaking of Suzuki, look at this. The British wildcard, Chris Walker. Will it be this lap that he makes a move? Not quite. So good riding, good solid riding by Hodgson. Good attacking riding by Walker and Harger. Is he about to spring a surprise and do something spectacular? Don't be surprised. <laughs> Well, I can tell you that Luca Catalora is down in 18th place at the moment. For those of you who are interested in the man that is on Fogarty's bike, down in 18th place and lapping some three, nearly three seconds slower than the leaders. It's the battle of the Ducati teammates, the wildcard teammates, that is. John Reynolds has got ahead of James Hayden. And Aaron Slight is again for the second time today inside the top ten in ninth position on his return to World Superbike. That he was feeling just a little tired, almost if you could use a, a soccer analogy that he's not match fit, he's not bike fit at the moment, and he'll build back up that as the rounds continue. He'll get straight back into it next weekend at Monza. Great to see him back in the World Superbike Arena. As we take a look at third and fourth again, Chris Walker, 28-year-old, three times a runner-up in the British Superbike Championship. Will this be his year? He's already got his work cut out. He's back in fourth behind Reynolds, Hodgson and Hayden in the championship standing. But early days. Next round of the British Championship is next weekend at Alton Park. So these boys are busy at the moment. There he goes. Pierre Francesco, Killy Edwards chasing. And these three chasing them all. Harger's a little bit inconsistent. I don't know if he's having problems with his selection of tyre yet again in this race, but he is inconsistent. Um, his lap times are varying. The gap between him and Walker changes corner by corner. Um, I think Noriyuki needs to kind of settle himself down a little bit. Maybe that brush with Chris Walker earlier on has unsettled him a little bit. Roger, you mentioned catching up. That's exactly what Colin Edwards is doing. He took three tenths of a second out of Pierre Francesco Keeley on the previous lap. They come up into Goddard. The final left-hand turn before the run onto the main straight. And we will watch that timing monitor very closely. First and second have already gone across. It was 2.2. It is now just two seconds. So Edwards has taken another two tenths of a second out of Frankie Keeley. So over the last two laps, someone's down. That's Colin Edwards. I wouldn't be surprised. It is. The Texan is down. The world championship leader is out of race two. So he picks the bike up. Whether it's too badly damaged to continue, Edward's doing a very quick assessment and we'll need to get out of the, uh, the kitty litter very, very quickly. Wow, second place, leading the championship and he drops it. So that is almost certainly hand in the race to Pierre Francesco Keeley. Edwards is back on it and it doesn't appear to be too much visibly from our point of view anyway, too much wrong with the bike. Colin will find out on the next lap though. Well. I'd say Colin Edwards has only got one place to go with that bike and that's back to the pits because although the gravel could have gone in the engine there, probably too dangerous to continue. He's got a lot of dirt in the tyres, the tyres are very hot and when they go in the kitty litter as you call it, then that sticks and impregnates into the tyre and you've got no grip. Look at this battle for second now, it was for third, Edwards has elevated these two guys and that is Neil Hodgson and Chris Walker. Walker the inside this time, not close enough. They both slip and slide into the Melbourne hairpin. Walker's got the inside run. He's not giving up on Neil Hodgson. And now that he knows, he may be experiencing his first ever podium in a World Superbike race. He was delighted to finish fourth last year. He said that's the highlight of his career. He could go one better. And so too could Neil Hodgson. And Hager is in fourth in search of a podium. Well, not too far behind this bunch is Yanagawa. Yanagawa is actually three seconds behind Harger, and that's a good performance from Yanagawa. Very consistent lap times. We've been watching the monitors here. We know, as we said, he's got an injury, but look how quick Hodgson is through Craner curves. Now, then the Suzuki comes back at the Ducati here at the old hairpin. Walker closes the gap. They leave Harger there. They then accelerate. The Ducati's very good here. Walker then comes very strong as they go round Schwantz curve here and into McLean's. Walker closes the gap a little bit on Hodgson here. They then accelerate here and the Suzuki's actually better than the Ducati at this point on the track and this is a very difficult place to pass so there's no chance of Walker overtaking there. He takes a deep line into the corner as Killy gets a little bit of a slide and a wobble and looks behind and a deep line into the corner and has come round underneath Hodgson there. So whether there was a moment for Hodgson there out of camera, we don't know. Persistence has paid off at the moment for Chris Walker, the stalker. 
is up in the second position. Listen to the crowd. They really fancy his spectacular style, and that's it. The first DNF for Colin Edwards. It is all over for the World Championship leader in race two. That is his first non-finish of the 2000 season. A frustrating time for the Texan. He dropped it at Redgate. Turn one. We get back to the action. This is second, third and fourth. Pierre Francesco Keeley is looking down the barrel of his first ever World Superbike race win here at Donington Park. And this is the wild card scrap for second. Walker and Hodgson, they battle it out every second weekend in the British Superbike Championship and Hodgson is back in second. Walker won't give up though. He switches line, outside, inside. They've been fighting for the entire race, these two. Well, this isn't gonna do anybody's heart any good, I don't think, but they, this is the way they battle, they work hard. Chris Walker is a real fighter. Hodgson is really gritty. Nobody wants to give an inch and they both want to be the top Brit. And um, this is gonna go all the way to the flag, I'm convinced. Um, We've got to see how tyre wear is going to play a part as the race progresses, but we're already into lap 13 of 25, so this is sort of half distance. What an ed educated ride by Noriyuki Haga. There's Adrian Gorse talking to his rider, Colin Edwards, who can't do anything about it now. Look at this. He'll take a look at the monitor in a moment and watch this spectacular battle. Three places, second, third, and fourth. Been quite a mature display by Noriyuki Haga knows that the championship is all about points. He hasn't done anything silly at the moment and has stuck like glue to the back of either Hodgson or Walker, whichever one it may be on whatever lap. Walker, that spectacular sideways style into the Melbourne hairpin. He's got an inside run. Whoa, he sticks it on the inside. He switched back and it looks like Walker is through. He is on the 49 Suzuki. And Hager now slips it up the inside. Will he get through on Hodgson? He does. Hager almost coming up on the inside and Hodgson doesn't want to relinquish that position. Look at this side by side over the line. Ducati and Yamaha, the wild card up against, well, the world championship contender. Great racing. Absolutely breathtaking stuff. And Hodgson held his ground there. Hager saw an opportunity as Walker pushed it up the inside at the Melbourne loop on Neil Hodgson. He made that pass. He was committed. The back end was out on the Suzuki as he entered the corner and Hager now knows he's got a scrap on his hand. I'd say it's a long time since Hager's had such a tough race and he's gone through underneath Hodgson there. So Hager on the move forward. Just saying one lap ago, what an educated ride, what a mature ride by Hager so far. He's just waited his time. He's been watching these two carve each other up in front of him and now Hager is sitting on a podium position. It's not over. We saw how determined Neil Hodgson has been in this race and in race one. But look at Chris Walker. He's got something to ride for now. He's sitting in second position, although some four seconds behind Pierre Francesco Keeley. Let's not forget about Frankie. Look at Hodgson on the inside of Hager. And Hager's back end sticks out. The British are going wild. Their boys are second and third. And the wild cards are really sticking it to the World Championship regulars. Well, there's no apology made there by Neil Hodgson. He's in a mood where he's determined. Chris Walker's in a mood where he's determined. Noriyuki Haga is in a race and he's in a battle where he's got two guys that want to beat him more than he, want, they, he wants to beat them. So um, Haga would have seen that Edwards has, has fallen and that would put Haga back in the lead in the championship, of course. Um, so he's got to think about that, Haga, because he doesn't want to end up in the dirt. Watch Neil Hodgson sizing up Chris Walker, not quite close, close enough. Four seconds on the last lap, the difference, now it's 4.3. So Walker has lost some three tenths of a second to race leader Pierre Francesco Keeley. It is Suzuki one and two, Ducati and Yamaha. Two wild cards in the top three. This is almost like Japan. And it's a true testament to the strength of the British Superbike Championship. And listen to the crowd, cheer there boys. Obviously a four second gap is too much to make up uh, when you're battling like this because you have to ride reasonably defensively. You see Chris Walker moving about a little bit in the track there to try and block a pass from Neil Hodgson and that will happen all the way down to the last lap and it's too late now for either one of these, I think, to make a break from each other. Down into Fogarty's, S's and everything closes back up nicely. This is where Walker is particularly good down this section into the Melbourne loop. Now let's look for him flicking the back end out of the bike and there it goes and that helps him turn the bike 
gives him more of an opportunity to keep a tight line and turn the bike and far it up towards Goddard's corner now. You see Walker moving about in the track, trying to play a little bit of blocking tactics. Now this is where Hodgson is very good. Now Hodgson will get the power on very, very good out of Goddard's here, get in the slipstream of Chris Walker, pull out and not pass him, I don't think, this time into Redgate because he's not close enough. He's looking, sizing it up, no, not quite close enough, and Harger has to sit and watch. Ten laps to go, race two, round four. You're watching Chris Walker, the 28-year-old, and the 26-year-old Ducati rider, Neil Hodgson. These guys race each other in the British Superbike Championship. There is title contender Noriyuki Haga, but these boys know each other's riding style so well, they know what to expect from each other. And this has just been a colossal battle right from the word go. Hodgson was disappointed after letting the World Championship regulars go in the first race and he had to work so hard. Now watch this for a bit of physical riding. Harger just stopped on the back brake. It stood out a little bit. It was very, very close between he and Hodgson, but a good clean passing move by the Ducati rider. Frankie Keeley. Now in the previous lap, three tenths of a second, Walker pulled in on his World Superbike regular competitor, Frankie Keeley. The work Suzuki rider up against the British Suzuki rider down into Melbourne. There's the gap. And Frankie is doing it nice. Oh, look at that. Stepping it out again, Chris Walker. Whilst he looks out of control, he's so much in control. The problem is he's doing that on the right-hand side of the tyre. Donington Park is a clockwise circuit, so the right-hand side of the tyre gets most of the work. Whilst he's doing that, he's using tyre wear up and with 16 laps into a 25 lap race. And this is where Hodgson is good. We talked about it the last lap. He sized him up and this time he's made the pass stick and that's Chris demoted now to third place. But testament to, testimony to both these riders that they're not on factory bikes. And Chris Walker will be seeing that bike of Pierre Francesco Killies up the front there, wishing that he only had the horsepower that that factory Suzuki's got. These two riders, and I say these two because they're as good enough as being one, they're so close, have taken almost half a second out of Frankie Keeley on that last lap. The gap was four seconds, now it's down to 3.58. So they're reeling him in. So long as they don't scrap too much together, they may be still in with a chance of catching Frankie Keeley, but it is a big ask. Three and a half seconds. Here's a replay of the Hodgson move on Walker. Well, Walker actually got on the rumble strips at the exit of the pit lane there, which I've never seen anybody do that and managed to turn the bike in into Redgate. So well done, Chris. This is back with this battle for second place into Fogarty's and really, really working hard, the pair of them. Uh, it's, a, it's fantastic that the British Superbike Championship is at such a standard that two guys can run in podium positions in a World Superbike event here. And Noriyuki Haga now probably has looked and thought, I'm going to wait and see what happens here. He must be looking at them barging into each other and thinking, definitely on the podium here, I just need to sit and wait. <laughs> Not such good news for fellow wildcard rider Steve Pislop on the Yamaha. He has dropped from our timing monitor. Luca Catalora back in 19th position. Ben Bostrom has penetrated the top 10. Watch this, the Ducati of Neil Hodgson. Will it be a repeat of the lap before? Yes, it is. Slips through at Redgate. So back up into second, lap 17 of 25, just eight to go. Fair gap back to Akira Yanagawa. John Reynolds is still ahead of his teammate James Hayden, who is in seventh. And Aaron Slide, a tremendous run in eighth position for his return ride. Don't forget, in just one week's time, we're at Monza for the fifth round of the 2000 Championship. Pocket Walker, not wanting to give an inch to Neil Hodgson. Through Schwantz, up into McLean. This has been a tremendous riding display by the two British wildcards. Two contenders for the British Championship this year. Will we see them in World Superbikes one day? Will it be Hodgson's return? Will it be Walker's entry? Hodgson runs a little wider. Coppers, look at this, they're so close. Almost touching handlebars. Chris Walker, the outside run. Hodgson, the better line into Fogarty's. Fantastic racing. Well, they like that stuff, believe it or not. It looks heart-stopping to us, but a little bit of elbow bashing does stimulate the adrenaline, and uh, providing you don't let that, let that take command of your, uh, your control and judgment, then everything's fine. Neil Hodgson struggles a little bit at the Melbourne Loop there, where Walker is particularly good, and that's because Walker has that technique of flicking the back end out and breaking hard down into there. This is 
Again, we talked about Hodgson's strong bits and Goddard's exit of Goddard's is strong and Redgate in the first section of the track. And now Hager's come back to join the party. And if Hager can make a pass on Chris Walker, then we could see another gap appear between second and third. Noriyuki Hager, the 25-year-old factory, uh, factory Yamaha rider. Great win in Kyle Army. Whoa, that's Giovanni Basai off on the Kawasaki. But back on the track and okay. Has a quick look behind, no problem. Hager is still lurking and looks dangerous. They're in fourth position. Walker and Hodgson, as much as they've got their head down behind the screen, they have to have sort of one eye looking, for, looking at the side all the time, expecting Hager to come storming through, especially in the closing stages. Six and a half laps remain. There is the Yamaha pit, David Brivio, <laughs> chewing away at his fingernails. Nerve-wracking time, but the Suzuki camp would be feeling fairly confident at the moment. They've got two in the uh, top three. I thought Chris Walker was going to come flying through on the inside. He switches to have an inside look at Neil Hodgson. He locks it up, almost comes through on the inside. Walker, unbelievable in race two. Hodgson, so steady but so aggressive and strong. And Walker, simply spectacular. The good thing for these two guys is that the team managers all watch the monitors and they see our pictures and they'll be looking at these two guys and thinking this championship could do with them in there and can we find them a bike because aggression and sheer determination is what, what counts and the harder you work, the, the kind of luckier you get um, and these guys work really hard for what they do. Well, there's always the talk that in Japan the wild cards do so well and always the talk around the paddock is, oh yeah, because they get the special equipment and they know the circuit so well and they get extra help from the factories. Well, these boys aren't getting any special help, I can tell you that. Here as British wild cards, it's just good hard riding, guts and determination, second and third. The best that Britain can pop up against the world superbike regulars and they are really holding their own at the moment. Quick top 10 for you, Keely Hodgson, Walker Hager, we know the top four so well. Yanagawa five, Reynolds six, Hayden seven, Slide is still holding on to that eight. Ben Bostrom, that's a good showing from him. And Andy Mecklau in 10th. Nice ride by the Guerin Ducati rider. This is Chris Walker making the bike hop from side to side. That's because he's pulling the front brake on and the back wheel's coming off the ground. Of course, the weight transfer is all to the front. Back wheel comes off the ground and then it hinges on the steering. But back now at the S's now. Walker looks really, really wild into there, I have to say. And almost cutting across the, uh, the, the side of Hodgson there. But pretty much this is his riding style so uh, I can't really say that it's out of control because it's Chris Walker's style and uh, he's staying on board so that's great now Hager must be looking at this and thinking right there's a couple of guys here and um, if I just really make a move on them and put a spurt on perhaps I can get up to second place or at least a podium position and at this time of the year every point that you can get if you are a regular world championship contender you really need Five laps to go. Hager has been following these two for long enough now. He knows every weak point they have on the circuit. He knows where their strong points are. He tried to stick it through before on Chris Walker, and Chris Walker gave it right back to him. He was a little disappointed when he left Sugo because he didn't come away with a race win, and his little nephew said to him, ah, oh, you let Azutsu son beat you. And he was very disappointed and wanted to do better here at Donington for his friends and family. Well, he's in a tremendous scrap at the moment, and Hager is starting to make a move now. He's starting to get something to work on Chris Walker. Watch Hager under break. I would say in Fogarty's S's, he is starting to develop. He's starting to build on something. Four and a half laps to go in round four. Francis Batter, the Ducati team manager and owner, there's his man. The 35-year-old Italian, Frankie Keeley. Can he bring up Suzuki's first victory here at Donington? It looks that way. Walker now. He wants to get a bit of protection from Noriyuki Haga and get ahead of Hodgson. The problem for Walker is that he knows that if he passes Hodgson, Hodgson gets a better drive out of Goddard's and passes him back at Redgate. So it's really a lot of effort and um, for no real return. And I think Walker will be thinking if I can hang on in here until the last lap, then make my move on the second part of the circuit, then Hodgson won't have Redgate uh, in which to pass Walker um, to, 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 to retain, regain that second place. Now, the problem that Walker has, of course, is that Hager, and I said it, this inconsistency of Hager, do you see now that he's lost some ground? He's lost, you know, kind of five or ten metres in a couple of corners. I don't really understand what's going on with him, to be fair, but 
Anyway, not to worry. The lap gap at the front, I have to tell you now, is down to 2.77 seconds. That has been reduced from 3.5 to 2.77 seconds, and Hodgson lapped half a second faster than Pierre Francesco Kelly on that lap. Frankie Keely is a sensible rider. You would probably have to conclude from that that Frankie has maybe just wound it down a little bit just to conserve himself. The crowd is still cheering for their domestic riders for the wild cards. And it would be fantastic to have two of them on the podium at the end of this marvellous second race. It's been so entertaining. Here's a replay. This may be an incident between Aaron Slight and Ben Bostrom. Just maybe an overtaking move because Bostrom is now up into seventh position. So. It's been a much improved ride by the Works Ducati rider. Minus his teammate Carl Foggy, we all know that. The word is that Foggy will be back hopefully at, at uh, Brands Hatch and we can't wait for him to return. His replacement rider, Luca Catalora, the three times world champion on 125s and 250s, is back in 17th position. Time is running out. They are well inside five laps. It's in fact three laps to go when they cross the line this time around. It has been such an enjoyable day here at Donington Park, and it's not over yet. You get that feeling. If Harger can get back up there with Walker, because I'm sure Walker, now they've left Harger behind. Absolutely left him behind. So Harger is out of contention for the podium. Three to go. Not only have they left Harger behind, but they're catching Keeley down to 2.16 seconds. Three laps to go. Two laps after this one that they're on now, Hodgson will be able to smell the exhaust fumes now, Pierre Francesco Killy. He'll want that top slot, and really there's nothing to lose by giving it a go. He got third place in the first race earlier today. Walker is there on his back. He's really got nothing to lose by having a go, and I think he's going to give it his, his all. Two and a half laps remain through Swans into McLean's. This is at the top end of the Donington circuit. Listen to the horns and the cheers go. And we must say, there was a question mark over this meeting. We were wondering, and everyone was wondering, just how many Brits would turn up, seeing how Carl Fogarty wasn't on track. We must say congratulations to the British public. They have turned out in droves. And look at Walker, still hounding the back of Neil Hodgson. And they are visibly closer to Frankie Keeley now. Whether Frankie Keeley is experiencing tyre problems or he's just relaxing a little bit. Down to 1.65 seconds now, the gap. One to two. Look at this. Just two laps remaining. Keeley, Hodgson and Walker, top three. I'm wondering if Keeley chose a soft tyre to make that break at the front of the race, and now he's paying the price. Remains to be seen if these two guys can catch him, but uh, it's getting pretty close. Let's look at the monitor for a split on this one now. Walker's hanging on. They're all hanging on. It's down to one and a half seconds. This is it, Neil Hodgson is in with a chance. One and a half seconds, but only two laps remaining. That is a big ask to reel Frankie Keeley in. He was chasing him in the second, had a sniff at second position. Well, he's got second at the moment. Now he wants to go for the win. Carl Fogarty is the only British rider to win a World Superbike race here at Donington. Can Hodgson do it? Walker will have to come from a long way back. Let's watch the split now. It's down from 1.507 to 1.35. So Hodgson has taken two tenths out of him in the first sector. This is it. The last one and a half laps. What an entertaining race. What a fascinating race for the crowd. Top end of the circuit through Coppice. And look at Frankie Keeley. He is definitely in tire trouble. The run down Starkey. Here come the wildcard boys. They've got one and a quarter laps to do something about the Italian. Hodgson's trying everything. Walker's trying everything. Such an emotional moment. The crowd are going wild. They can smell it. They can feel it. I think Killy has done what I predicted and gone for a soft compound tyre. He may just be able to hang on. Who knows? Because once you've caught him, you've still got to pass him. But it's going to be very, very close. And it is Dunlop tyres in the first six positions. More to the point, Dunlop, one, two, and three. Pierre Francesco Keeley is now just one lap away from his first victory at Donington, Suzuki's first victory at Donington. Can he hang on, or can Neil Hodgson reel him in? The gap is now under one second, but that is a very, very big ask in just one lap, almost one second. Hang on, it'll be over in just over a minute and a half. There he is, Neil Hodgson in second. He has left Chris Walker. 
Well, I wouldn't say that yet. Chris Walker's maybe decided that he's going to see what happens. Hodgson's trying everything he knows, and this is just what the crowd wanted, just what the team managers want to see, just what his team wants to see. True, true gritty performances. We knew, always knew, have known that Chris Walker has been capable of those. Hodgson has been sat there and criticised from time to time, and now he's doing his very, very best to try and win a race for Britain. Frankie Keeley, he will know. He's been watching his pit board. He knows that these two Wildcat Riders are honing in on him. This is Neil Hudson's chance. Look at the Wildcat Rider right up inside Frankie Keeley now. Can he do it and become the only other British rider to win at Donington? Keeley's on the inside. Hudson, he's there. Listen to the crowd. This is unbelievable. Out of there and Walker's passed him too. So Frankie Keeley, his tyres have let him down into the Melbourne hairpin. And we have got two British wildcard riders, one and two. This has been unbelievable. The crowd will go bananas. Frankie Keeley looks behind. It's all over. Suzuki and Keeley are denied a win. And Hudson will pick up his first World Superbike win. Hudson has been a hero at home. Oh, yeah. Across the line, he wins on Ducati, the first wildcard rider to win at home in Britain and the only other British rider to win other than Carl Fogarty. It went to pieces for Suzuki. They can't believe it. What about the wild cards? What a fantastic race. Slight comes round head of Bostrom, so that's fantastic news for Aaron Slight. A very, very emotional moment here at Donington Park. He can't believe it. His hands are on his head. Stood up on the foot pegs there, going down through Craner Curves. Take nothing away from Chris Walker because Chris Walker was the carrot that Hodgson needed. He wanted to be the top Brit, so did Walker. And when you get that, that's the kind of racing that you do get. Carl Fogarty's not here, but the crowd, well, they still have a British victory. What about that? At one stage, we thought Frankie Keeley may have just been relaxing. It wasn't. His tyres went to pieces. And Neil Hodgson gives the crowd exactly what they wanted, a home rider victory. Unbelievable scenes here at Donington Park. And we're going to be waiting hours for him to get to the podium. Fantastic stuff. Well, the team manager, Daryl Healy, from the GSE INS Concern, said if they got a win, nobody would be going home tonight. <laughs> well, look at that. The crowd running out. There's Aaron Slight. And a great ride by Aaron, too. We can't forget about that seventh position for the Works Honda rider. But the two wild cards. First and second, how about that? Frankie Keeley at the last moment denied a win here at Donington. Harger in for fourth from Yanagawa. And something must have happened to John Reynolds on the last lap. There is the Ducati team, Neil Hodgson's team, Colin Wright, the team manager, and very, very emotional scenes. Well, it's a very, very important day for the team because as you can see, the riders having to go on the grass to, uh, to get back to the pits. and The crowd are very enthusiastic, and let's hope nobody gets sort of hurt as the, the people are coming round. But the riders are very slow. Hodgson's having to come right across the grass to try and get back to the pits. But a very, very important day for the GSC racing team. Um, they're trying to look at an opportunity to go into uh, World Championship racing next year. And what a good platform to do it from. A marvellous day for that team. Susie is with Colin Wright, Hodgson's team manager. Tell him what about it? I'm so exhausted. I mean, three laps from the end, we thought we were going to be third, and here we are oh, winning this World Superbike race. I'm so pleased for Neil, INS Ducati, Dunlop Tires, everybody. I'm just delighted. Is this the most exciting day of your life so far, or what? Uh, in my life, probably. <laughs> Colin, well done, thanks. Thank you very much. Marvellous stuff for the British team. And Neil Hodgson, that is a day, that is a moment he will never, ever forget. Unbelievable. We go through the final placings there, and Luca Catalora back in 17th position. Just the 20 bikes finishing the field. Lance Isaacs in 20th position on the Ducati. But there we go. There's uh, Frankie Keeley. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Frankie is still out on the course. And uh, perhaps he's not feeling too good. The doctors are in attendance. And wonder if he's hurt himself. There's his wife running towards him. And Frankie Keeley. Wow, what a race. At one stage, it looked like it was all going to be his. 
and uh, Frankie just getting consoled by his wife. I certainly know that Colin Edwards was feeling a little dehydrated and a little dizzy after the first race. It has been very, very warm here for the riders and a tough day and uh, hard luck there. Look at someone of the crowd jumping on with James Hayden. <laughs> That's a great ride for James too. He finished in sixth position. The wild cards have been incredibly strong here at home at Donington Park as predicted. Everybody thought that because King Carl, Carl Fogarty wasn't able to ride that the crowd may be not as enthusiastic here this weekend and not turn out in such great numbers, but they've done all those things and really having the ride of his life there with James Hayden um, on the back of, of his Ducati as he's trying to make his way back to the pits. And that's the scene as we can see it from a distance, the marshals trying to get the track clear, but the spectators haven't let us down. Edwards Fall has given Noriyuki Haga back the world championship lead, 130 to 119. Frankie Keeley consolidates his third due to Troy Corsa's non-finish after falling at the first turn. Lavia is still in fifth after four rounds. Well done to Gregorio Lavia, but his teammate is honing in. In uh, Akira Yanagawa, we have uh, a few of the wild cards further back there. Yoshikawa in 15th position. Fogarty uh, will be back at Brands. Let's keep our fingers crossed. And Gobert should be back next weekend for Monza. And Aoki is just outside the top 10. Well, the crowd have had a wonderful day. They've been treated to some spectacular riding. And Yamaha, well, they are very, very well positioned on top in the manufacturer standings from Honda. A successful day, although we're not as successful as it could have been in race two. And watch this. This was a very big moment for Frankie Keeley. And that's where it all went to pieces. Look at Hodgson just honing in and just whizzes past Frankie Keeley. He zeroed in on the Suzuki rider, and that's where it all fell into the Ducati rider's hands. These things happen from time to time. Frankie's seen many races um, come and go. He's won a lot, and he's, he's, he's uh, switched on enough to know that that was his mistake and probably a poor to a choice of tyres, but he did say after the podium in the first race that he needed to get away. And I think he chose a setup and a combination that was enabling him to do that and paid the price at the end of the race. And once we'd gone through Fogarty's here, then Chris Walker had also seen an opportunity, got maximum drive, and then he took off as well. And Frankie then was left to look behind and settle for third. Frankie knew it was all over at that stage, but will still stand on the podium in both races. The Suzuki rider and gained some valuable championship points, but uh, certainly Hodgson and Walker, the heroes of race two, they entertained us from the word go right to the finish with the best possible result as far as the Brits are concerned. And just coming back to the pits, there is Chris Walker. It's been a long old journey. I just saw out of the commentary box window, James Hayden successfully made it back. But the crowd are so passionate about their riders, so patriotic, and they really got the full serve there. They got the full compliment Brits one and two, wild cards one and two. And that was every wild card rider's ambition just to show the world superbike regulars what they can do. And they did it in the best possible way. What an emphatic victory for Neil Hodgson. I'm sure he is still shaking his head in disbelief. And in a matter of moments, we will see he, Chris Walker, and Pierre Francesco Keeley on the podium. Absolutely engulfed by the team. It's a sea of orange. And, well, it's been just a beautiful, it's only spring here in the UK, but it has truly been a summer's day. A very, very enjoyable day, weather-wise and racing-wise. The weather has been absolutely spot on. It couldn't have been better. We couldn't have staged a better show if we'd been able to manage it. And let me assure you that these races are not managed at all. Everybody's fighting out there tooth and nail for the best possible result. And the fans now desperate to get a glimpse of the podium and who can blame them and um, they've got two of their their guys up there they thought they only they only had one in this country and he was called Carl Fogarty they now have got more and um, that's brilliant for the, for the fans they've been brilliant for the World Superbike Championship and it's always been probably the most popular event uh, in the UK and here at Donington Park and Brands Hatch so much so that uh, the, 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 the crowds are bigger here for the World Superbike than they are for the Grand Prix. And, and Pierre Francesco Killy there reflecting on what might have been. 
We will hear from Frankie soon. And he's getting ready just to uh, jump up onto the podium to get third place. And it's uh, two positions worse off than what he was expecting to get. But nonetheless, still a good podium finish. The crowd are flocking in on the main straight to gather around the base of the podium where they will really enjoy the party. And Frankie Keeley being brought out onto the podium now. He is a crowd favourite here. And a very hard day's work for Frankie. He's a very emotional, he's a very passionate person about his riding. And listen to the crowd for Chris Walker, the stalker. On the podium, congratulates Frankie. And Neil Hodgson, marvellous stuff. Getting congratulated by Frankie Keeley and Chris Walker. <laughs> And Walker made Hodgson work every minute of that race. And who would have imagined a wild card victory here at Donington? Let me tell you, looking out the commentary box window, the crowd have run all the way around the track, I think, to get here to the podium position. A flock of people coming from all over the place to try and get a glimpse of this podium presentation. And what a period of 12 months also, it has been for this team that Neil Hodgson rides for. Last year, Troy Bayliss won the British Superbike Championship. And now, just the following year, Hodgson has won a World Superbike race in his team colours. And that could very well be a turning point in his racing career. Look at him still shaking his head. You know him quite well, Roger. I mean, how much will that affect him and mean to him? That's everything. Well, I've, I've helped, been able to give Neil the benefit of my experience in racing um, since he was 17 years old. Um, we've manufactured opportunities for him to do World Championship racing before that probably haven't come off because they've been too much too soon for him. Um, I'm very pleased for him that he's proved to everybody that doubted his ability that he has got what it takes and uh, nobody could ever see that race um, and not say that Neil Hodgson was a potential world champion. Well, Frankie Keeley, I'm sure, was hoping that that Italian national anthem would be for him and his victory. Instead, it is for Ducati as the winning manufacturer and a very important point in the season, Neil Hodgson giving Ducati their first win of the year. A very important moment. The champagne sprays and Hodgson really is a hero at home. Sensational stuff for the 26-year-old. He's raced 500cc Grand Prix. He has done full seasons of World Superbikes, but never scored a victory. And that is a very, very special moment. Frankie Keeley still reflecting on what may have been, and this was some brutal riding. Look at this, a very fast section of the circuit. 
Hodgson through on the inside. Then watch Haga slip up the inside of Chris Walker. This was breathtaking stuff. Slips through on the inside at Swans Curve. Up into McLean's. Watch the chop back. Chris Walker says, you think you like that? Take this, Haga. Slips back on the inside. Marvellous riding by 49, Chris Walker, and regained third position at that stage. In fact, that was fourth because uh, Edwards was still in it. Here's Frankie. Frankie, what do you have to do to win here at Donington? I don't know. Maybe the race alone. <laughs> I don't know. Something happened on the bike. I don't want to see it. Okay. Can you tell us, did you choose a soft tyre so you could go out quickly and take yes. the lead? It's the same, the first one, and uh, this tyre can, uh, can help me in the first uh, eight, ten lap. And after I know I have to ride like in the first race. Um, but in this uh, first eight lap, if I am in front, I can uh, make a gap. And this is just a way to make it under the pressure Colin and uh, another guy. So I don't know what about Colin. He's fall down? Yeah, he, he lost the front. For him. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, what is this uh, really disappointed about today, because uh, I have a win in the hand, and uh, I don't know what I have to do, but uh, we are strong and we are there. I'm sorry for you today, Frankie, but see you at Monza. Sure. Ciao. There you are. We said that he's a very emotional and a very passionate rider, and you can just see it in his face and hear it in his voice, just how much... He loves to win and wants to win for himself and Suzuki. And it would have been a very special moment if he had done it today. He got a blistering start, left the field for dead at the line. And Hodgson got a great inside start. So too did this guy, Chris Walker. Chris, not only did you out Haga Haga, you out World Superbike, the whole of World Superbikes today. How about it? I'm spent. <laughs> That's all I could say. No, I mean, the bike was brilliant. They changed a few things in the gap. Les Pearson and um, my uh, engine man. Dave Hagan, we um, you know we changed a couple of little things and it made all the difference. I could just stick it in there in the corners and you know break a little bit later and it made it just like I said it made all the difference. Neil rode a brilliant race and I was dreading getting in a race with the Brits, you know, because he kind of end up bashing fairings and stuff like that like every week. But no, it paid off really in the end. Obviously, Phil sorry for killer. I don't exactly know what went wrong, tire or engine, but fair play. It was the shades of, of British Superbikes today, but uh, just tell us exactly how you're feeling right now. Uh, honestly, I'm peaking. I really, really, really cannot believe it. I was, I was fifth in the first race and I was so disappointed and everyone was going, oh, you were fifth, it was the World Championship. And it's just, I wanted a Rostrum so bad and it's, um, I can't, well, I just still can't believe it. Well done to Neil as well, brilliant, thank you. Chris Walken, congratulations on your first World Superbike podium, thanks. Thank you. All thumbs up, all smiles for the stalker. And it was a truly magnificent race. He battled with his British Superbike counterpart, Neil Hodgson, for the entire race. It was tough, they duked it out right from the word go right until the finish and a very special moment for this guy neil hodgson neil how amazing is it to hear that national anthem incredible absolutely incredible it's a it's a dream come true so he's a, you know i hoped when i came here i could possibly get on the podium in maybe one race you know you never know what's going to happen you know you, we are riding against the best in the world but the teams worked so hard all weekend the bike was set perfectly the dunlop tires was you know everything was working right and i was riding well so and what about the battles with, with you and Chris and you and Norrie and then you and Frankie at the end? Yeah, I was thoroughly, I believe that or not, I was thoroughly enjoying the battle. Um, Chris was a little bit faster than me in certain places and I was quicker than him and every lap I could pass him into red gear but then he usually got underneath me going around the loop and I thought if I could just get a few tenths on him I could hopefully go a little bit faster and that's what happened and slowly closing on Frankie a little bit. So did it cross your mind that on the last lap Chris was queuing you up to get you? Oh absolutely, I knew he was there but as soon as I saw Frankie slide, I closed the throttle and then I thought, no, open it, open it quick. So I got back on the gas and managed to just squeeze past him on the straight. But then I was looking like this, you know, like where they're going to come from. So, unbelievable. You know, just tell us, where has this streak of sheer determination and aggression come from? Uh, I, don't, I think I've always had it in me, you know, but um, in my opinion, I got the, the, the factory opportunities too young. I really, to be honest, I wasn't really ready for it and I was thrown in the deep end and it showed, you know, I, I was slightly out of my depth, but, you know, I've gone down a league. I'm learning the trade as a motorcycle racer, and I'm improving. And, you know, hopefully next year we can, you know, we can go up to the World Championships. If not, I'll do another year in England. I thoroughly enjoy it. Well, your Carl Fogarty's top tip, and you're certainly ready now. Congratulations, Neil Hodgson. Thank you very much. Neil Hodgson and Ducati victorious at home at Donington. And that was truly the turning point of the race there. That's where 
Neil Hodgson just said yes, and you heard him say there, he closed the throttle off, then said, no, no, open it, open it, and it was wide open right here when he went flying past Frankie Keeley. So the local boys do well at home. We look forward to seeing you next weekend, just seven days' time from Monza in Italy.